Hello and welcome to the first in our series of CWT guest episodes. Up first, we've got Joystick talking about a variety of Yuri anime and manga. Um, we've got content warnings for depression and suicide, I think towards the end of the clip. So if that's not really your thing, maybe pass on this one. But don't pass on following Joyce. She's great. Perhaps even an overabundance of shonen with shitty romance subplots uh, that have their compulsive <laughs> heteronormativity <laughs> yes. uh, shoved in your face. Um, That's true. And, you know, just give me some yeah. shitty gay uh, plots I've... in addition to those shitty cis heteronormative ones, okay? I'll take it. <laughs> I'll fucking take it. <laughs> Hello, uh, listeners. Uh, I am Joyce Stick, uh, and I run a YouTube channel called Joyce Stick, and I mostly talk about things that I um, that I like, and um, and uh, and occasionally uh, queer queer things that I like, though not as uh, though not as often. Uh, not as often as I'd like to, and I'd like to do more of it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's my, my thing. I am super psyched to have you on the show, at least, and I think Rago can say the same. Yeah, in fact, I can. Ah. I, I am super psyched to have you on the show as well. There, I also said it. I am super psyched to be here. Oh, wow. Wow, um, we're all indeed, sorry. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with Joyce's stuff, her stuff is great. Um, I have had the enormous privilege of getting to like edit some of uh, her videos or the scripts for some of her videos and they have all been very compelling, um, very well written, and always Joyce brings her own cool perspective to the mix. So if you haven't, uh, check it out. I think normally we would put There'll be links places. But honestly, if you like take a break to go watch Joyce's Rent a Girlfriend video, I won't be mad, but that'll mainly be because I didn't know you did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. uh, yeah, so I, I guess uh, first day, I mean, the, I guess uh, before I start, um, the first question I have for uh, you two is like, what Yuri have you like read or not read? <laughs> I've heard of, no, I just no, what, sorry. It's obvious you haven't read most things. <laughs> I've read all of the things that have been written. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yes, <laughs> I finished Fruit Tart, <laughs> and oh, so God. here's the. I I cannot believe because I was super busy in fall, and I was like, okay. I need a bunch of shows, and I still haven't done these threads yet, which is kind of embarrassing. Yeah. But I like, I need a bunch of shows to like review Fall 2020. And I cannot believe that Fruit Tart ended up being one of the shows that I actually finished it yet. <laughs> it did not deserve that status. <laughs> and yet. Yeah, I, I watched Fruit Tart, and it's like, it, it was, it, it got. <laughs> It got I it was it was interesting until I realized it wasn't and it was repetitive and I stopped and that's that's how it goes for yeah. most things that I pick up. Yeah, it was not great. <laughs> okay, so Ochigobori Fruit Tart is uh not it's 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 a it's a it's a show about gay idols making music videos. That's uh that's about all it is. And it's uh it's it, it's certainly got the the Yuri elements in it, but it's it's it, it's not. It's also a kind of repetitive gag story that's mm -hmm. not not very. That doesn't it doesn't seem to develop much over its runtime, and it's also and it's uh, uh yeah I uh, there there it's it's not terrible, but there are, there are. There are better things, in my opinion. I don't have a lot to say about it. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Um, mm. I don't know. I had... Yeah, last season, I was actually really busy, too. Because, mm -hmm. like, uh, for... Yeah, for, for most of 2020, actually, like, I was not really keeping up on seasonal anime. I was just kind of, like, watching 
watching things I had not seen yet. And um, one of those things that I had not finished um, last year was uh, Bloom Into You, which is one of the more uh, popular and well-known Yuri stories. Um, okay, so Bloom Into You is, uh, is a Yuri manga by uh, Nakatani Nio in which... Um, <clears throat> in which uh, it's, it's um, there uh, so there's this uh, there's a there's a high school girl uh, quite quite you who thinks that she who doesn't who like is not falling in love and wants to fall in love because and she's not sure if it's because of uh, because she well because she see because she has read a whole lot of romance stories and is like. I, I want what they have, but doesn't have what they have until she, until then someone, until then someone falls in, falls in love with her, mm -hmm. and then she's all like, and that, and it's a, and, and it's a, and it's a girl, and they, <laughs> it's, 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 it's really, it's real it's a, and they do, they do girl things for, for a while while they, while you is like, exploring her lack of uh, romantic interest or sexuality in interest in this girl or lack there or potential lack thereof mm -hmm. uh, there are there are some there is there's like an there is an explicitly an explicitly aero character who is involved uh, and like is uh, and so it talks a bit about what it what the it's it's actually it's actually a bit well well known uh, for like um, acknowledging that a romantic people exist, <laughs> and um, That's neat. and so and it and uh, and I don't want to I don't really want to spoil uh, how the how the ending how the how the ending goes. Uh, there's a there's a whole other subplot with uh, the the student council girl who is the the love interest in. And like how she, <laughs> she is trying to replace her, she is trying to replace her dead sister. There is a lot that goes on in this manga, and there is also a whole metaphor in a stage play that they're that they're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm really bad at summarizing <laughs> That's things. Fine. No, you that are. was perfect. <laughs> um, I mean this in the best possible way. You are better at it than I am. I'm terrible at it. Uh, <laughs> So the bar has never been lower. Uh, you, you've heard me, right? Yeah. I ramble. <laughs> I ramble. Yeah. I'm a rambler. But yeah, I mean, all in all, <laughs> yeah, all in all, the character, like the char the characters, are really good. The story is really, really good. It's right. it's very, it's very well and delicately drawn. And the anime adaptation is well, obviously incomplete, but also very about as good as the manga. And it it's it's. Uh, and and the manga the manga is uh, good enough that I would <laughs> actually it's it's that I would that I would say it's kind it's uh, one of the one of the essential Yuri's. Oh, okay. For uh, and especially and especially something I'd I'd recommend to to anyone anyone probably anybody questioning their their identity in general. It's it's a it's a very good queer story. Okay. Okay, okay. Neat, neat. That's excellent. I am um, I'm pretty happy to hear uh cuz I, I haven't read or seen it, but I'm pretty happy to hear um Aero representation cuz this is a thing that bothers me a tad um in terms of <laughs> just a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. I unfortunately cannot cannot speak to that, but I but I I do appreciate there there being more stories about all different types of people, and it's it's good. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. Good. Um, that brings us to uh, let's actually while we're on this topic, um, what else has been going on? What else other Yuri manga have been airing during the past few seasons? I also waste their time making them watch bad shows, so. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, they're... So, I guess the the first, um, 
the first things that I want to uh, talk about are uh, just, um, yeah, what's been airing in the, the last few seasons. Uh, so uh, I've been t I was told you watched, you both watched Adachi and Shimamura last season. I watched yeah. one episode, I believe. Oh, did I, did I get further than you? Am I misremembering? You probably did. Oh my goodness. Anyway, carry yes. on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, so Adachi, Adachi Nishima Mura is another, is, is another gay, uh, gay show about girl, about girls who, who, uh, don't, uh, so one of, one of them is, they're, they're both, uh, <clears throat> so basically, uh, Ada uh, it's, yeah, Adachi is the one who, who can't confess, and Shimamura is the one who's completely, who's completely clueless that Adachi is trying mm. to confess and, uh, you know, gay, but doesn't have any clue that they're gay because they don't, she, they don't know mm -hmm. people are real. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's that kind of a, it's that kind of a story. It, um, and it's, uh, and it's actually kind of, uh, a bit of a, a bit of a meme for, you know, <laughs> them almost like constantly like kind of them coming close to constantly almost confessing uh and then and then them and then adachi just not right. doing it <laughs> and it's uh and i it's although it is uh it is a really like it's a, it's an interesting it's it's an interesting uh it is an interesting series it's got this pull it, it's got the it's got the the little the little girl that claims to be a that claims to be a space alien and there is the <laughs> and there is also the and there's but what is what is actually really interesting to me about it is like that um the light novel uh actually like kind of um better justifies the how all of the like the reasons why the the relationship drama plays out how it does. Oh, interesting. That's kind of uh, it's a bit of a thing that's kind of missed in the anime. Uh, the author uh, Iruma Hitomi, uh, I believe uh, his his name. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's I'm pretty sure, um, if I remember. Yeah, it's a he. Um, if I'm remembering their name correctly, mm -hmm. uh, he does a he does a really good job writing out like the like confused gay internal monologues okay it's uh at least uh at least that's the at least uh, from the from the translation and also uh they also wrote the the bloom into you side novel about one of the one of the characters and i actually and i've read part of that recently um like there's actually this this whole this whole uh, really good chapter that he wrote where one of the the like the supporting character the younger version of the supporting character Sayaka from Bloom into You is all like oh my god I I think I I don't I just had a a gay experience but I don't know what the hell happened and I'm scared and it's a really and it's a really great uh it's it's a it's a really well written scene <laughs> and that is uh and that's kind of the that that's kind of the that that's kind of half the vibe of, of Adachi, Adachi and Shimamura. I, like Ad yeah. Adachi being conscious that she likes uh, she likes Shimamura, but not being not being able to say it, and Shimamura being more subtly subconscious, but not really knowing what her feelings are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's 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 good. It's good. It's uh. I do, I do, I do like it when, I do, I do like it when stories can nail, when stories, when queer stories nail that, like, that sort of, you know, that feeling of, am I, am I, am I making this? Oftentimes it feels like the way queerness or transness or, you know, being a member of the alphabet mafia, as I've heard it called, <laughs> is, <laughs> is um, this sense of, well, you know, you just know, you've always known. It's been super clear the entire time. Uh -huh. um, and that can sometimes cause friction with the reality of 
uh, being inundated with lots of cis heteronormative propaganda that makes it difficult to know or uh, makes you second guess. And a lot of times the, well, I knew I was gay the whole time uh, idea can be counterproductive for a lot of people who didn't know they were gay the whole time. Yeah. Uh, there are not enough trans series stories, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, I have, and the ones, uh, the ones that they're like, there are, there are like, uh, there are ones that like I can, like actually, this is kind of a kind of a thing I want to I want to look into more in general. Like the the few the few stories that are like explicitly about transness, I haven't actually like gotten around to most of them. Uh, because because time time's a bitch. <laughs> Truer words have never been spoken. It's amazing how few hours there are in days. Yeah, and there's and there's a lot of and there and like like Bloom into You has like kind of uh, the narrative the whole narrative elements of like uh, the the ma- the whole you know not <laughs> not uh, the mask uh, that they thing that they kind of explore with the metaphor of the play it's it's difficult to explain without just kind of summarizing the whole story mm. but like i can like i can kind of i can kind of say that that is is kind of what being what uh figuring out that your that your trans was like for for me anyways but like even though it's not about that necessarily totally <laughs> that is also kind of a to kind of a pivot to more current things that is also kind of a thing that is uh that is more uh more in in other side in other side picnic which also has a similar like the the point of view character in that series has a similar uh vibe uh, in her in her internal monologue at least in the novels mm-hmm. anyways and it's actually interesting because like uh, the the Ada, like the Adashima to I guess to contrast it a bit the Adashima adaptation actually did a really good job adapting the well uh, at least like visually adapting the the monologues although it didn't really like include them in their like completeness at all right they were there was an effort to have those thoughts represented um that doesn't come through quite as much in the in the other side picnic adaptation because there is a thing because there is another element in that series that is easier to adapt to screen than internal monologue and they seem to have decided to focus on that in the screen adaptation because it's it's it's, it's probably easier for them mm-hmm. as uh, as as directors and animators and everything i mean i don't i don't i don't know but i presume that that's the case i mean the the person who's directing it, other side directed steins gate right yeah, i i sort of remember books. this being like the mm. They also directed Kase san and Morning Glories and and Frag Time, uh, which which I liked. Uh, Frag Time uh, Frag Time was was good. Okay. Uh, do you want to real quick go into what Frag Time is for people who don't know? Oh yeah, Frag Time is like this. Uh, it's a it's a shorter Yuri manga about. It's like it's a two volume Yuri manga about a about a girl who can stop time and a girl who notices when time stops and she can only the girl can only stop time for three minutes a day and then they and then they're like hey let's let's go on three minute dates and things happen things happen so i have not (laughs) seen frag time but i have seen your video on it it was a very good video so i'm glad we actually got to it thank Uh you thank you (laughs) um uh yeah i'm i'm glad that (laughs) that it is it is it does seem to that video has does seem to have like made that inter- more interesting to people so i am i'm glad about that yeah absolutely i think that other side that other side picnic um like i can't i can't speak to exactly how it compares to uh to to steinskate or to i mean i haven't actually finished steinskate um well like just just speaking like about other side picnic particularly the thing that's interesting about it to me anyways is uh that it's um that like it actually kind of focuses more on like the horror elements of the series which are like downplayed in the 
well, not exactly downplayed, but, like, um, sort of not as, um, prominent. Yeah, like, they're, they're not, they're not the only thing in the light novel. Okay. Like, you know, there's, uh, there's, like, like, it's, like, the, ha the, the, like, the creepy pasta stuff is balanced with the, with the, the fluffy, the Yuri fluffy stuff. And it, and it, and in the, and in the anime, they just kind of, uh, they just... <laughs> more on the creepy pasta stuff? Yeah, it's, it has, it has more of, it has, yeah, and it actually, and it actually isn't all that great in, like, I can see why they do mm -hmm. it, but it's, but, like, the... The horror, the the visual, like the direction, isn't all that good, and I think it like kind of, uh, it kind of suffers a bit from like the too much showing the monster. Um, the one episode, the one scene that I thought actually was genuinely scary uh, in in Other Side Picnic was the scene with the where they did the phone call and then from the from the other side, and then there was like, wait, there's. The, the the person who they were talking to on the other end, uh, the researcher was all like, Just "Tell whoever's behind you to shut up." And then, but there's, there's no one there. There was nobody yeah. behind them, and it was, and then creepy things started coming out of the phone, and it's like, and it's like, and that was, and it was like, and it was like, oh my god, like they they, they didn't they didn't need to show a. Uh, they didn't need to show a a, a, a a monster with all the the CG the cheap CGI budget that mm -hmm. they had. They just needed to to show uh, to like to have a mood happen, and it was and it was a good mood and it worked. And like that was the only that's the only time that the horror in the show on him like worked. <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense because. I think both like in in general when it comes to like romance manga or or what have you like the the most important thing is like if you can convey feelings like more so than like any other genre um i i yeah. brought up steinskate just to perhaps suggest that like um if the team is a lot more focused on like if they're a lot more experienced with shows that like steinskate which like definitely focus more on like mechanics and like world things oh, than yeah. like um i mean it, it has a romance in it steinsgate and it's it's an it's a it's an okay <laughs> it's 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 fairly yeah. decent but um yeah if, if it was if um if that's the thing that if they were thinking that while they were making um the adaptation it could perhaps lead to uh, uh some disappointment yeah in terms of how it was adapted although like it's a little bit of a weird tension for me because like the uh one of the things that I think is like actually interesting and distinctive about Other Side Picnic is that it's not just a romance, and I like, like there are, like there are there are tons of you know, and that's that's something that I like appreciates because there are there are tons of stories that are like, you know, already about about pet people that are that are not romance store genre stories but have mm -hmm. romances in them, and it's like there are. It's like I feel like there, and I'm. I feel like there's there's not enough of that. Uh, like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of stories that are about uh, there. At least as of late, there are a good a fair amount of stories that are about queer people, mm. but not enough Actually. stories that have queer uh, people. That's in a really that. good point. And I appreciate, and I actually do. I actually, and I really like that. And I really like that other side picnic is uh, somewhat filling the gap in in that mm -hmm. regard, um, and that's that's just uh, and I would like to I would like to see more I would like to see more stories stories like that that are like a thing that is gay, right? Right, <laughs> and not just a gay uh, thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both are good. It's, it's but we, not even that. Like, yeah. what we have so far is necessarily. <laughs> bad i think it's just certainly a lot more that um what we have oh is no none so of it's bad inextricably it's just, linked you know. to a very specific <laughs> slice of life genre and there are, aren't really many like gay shonen like yes. there's no we got we got a protagonist to a shonen anime and it happens that she's gay 
and that's just a thing because there is an abundance perhaps even an overabundance of shonen with shitty romance subplots uh that have their compulsive heteronormativity <laughs> yes uh shoved in your face um that's true and you know just give me some yeah. shitty gay uh, thoughts I've... in addition to those shitty cis heteronormative ones okay i'll take it i'll fucking take it <laughs> although i although i haven't read it i have heard that uh chainsaw chainsaw man actually has a side character who is who is apparently uh who is apparently a polyamorous you know, lesbian um I haven't I haven't read it so I can't say how good that that is but it is a thing I've read that is enough there of that Chainsaw I've Man about. to know that when the anime <laughs> mm-hmm. comes out we're doing a critical weeb theory episode on it. That, this tangent it it reminded me of a show. I'll, I'll be quick. Um yeah. It reminded me of a show that I don't I didn't think we'd actually bring up here but it reminded me uh-huh. a bit of um Kill a Kill. Um in the sense that um I in my personal opinion, uh, for I, I've written about Kill a Kill before. It's basically it's like a shonen, but like a girl is the protagonist, and there's lots of blood and boobs and stuff. <laughs> I did an excellent job explaining that. Amazing. <laughs> yes, she, she can put on a sailor uniform, and the less the, the more exposed she is, the stronger she gets. Okay, okay, there we go. But um, I, I feel like at the end of Kill a Kill, like. The protagonist and her friend, who's also a girl, they definitely, like, go out on a date at the end, right? And it's always bugged me how, like, people... like Because, like, the target audience for Kill a Kill is definitely, like, dudes. Um, and, like, a lot of, like, the straight dudes who see Kill a Kill, like, reject the very clear and obvious um, ending to the show, which is that, like, these two girls, like, date. Um... And I, I was kind of because you mentioned like we there, you said like there's no shonen with like just like a polyamorous lesbian as like the protagonist. I'm like, well, would it still be shonen as we know it if a show like rather seriously just said, okay, I want to I want to do this type of story, but then I want to have like someone Go different on. like as the lead because it, it feels like to me a lot of the times like the people who watch shonen would like not accept a show like that as shonen. Um, if it were to go on, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't on a minor tangent. Not thought uh, about this as in much. In regards to another thing we've talked about, is this is the same question as is it an is insert thing an isekai? Uh, often because in order to mm-hmm. uh, decide whether or not something is uh, insert genre, you have to determine the constraints of that genre, and if your constraints for shonen include can't have gay people then there cannot be gay shonen well okay. we've talked a bunch about yuri maga in we can general, pivot and some yuri maga in specific how about we talk about some more yuri maga in specific yeah yeah absolutely uh so i guess um if y'all want to talk about the i have been i haven't read i haven't been reading uh, a lot of the apart from apart from bloom into you and i guess uh and i guess the, the novel i haven't i haven't actually i have been reading a bit more things mm-hmm. that have been fan translated and then things that have been uh officially english like english licensed and mm-hmm. some of those things are are actually quite quite interesting um and are and are things that I think should get should maybe get picked let us, up for let us spend our licensing. money on the English version um, of things, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's it is. I mean, it is it is nice to to have physical totally. books sometimes. <laughs> That's uh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, also just just making it more more accessible to people who are who are not super down with uh, with going on on scanlation sites either, you know, because uh, some people, like I know, some people just find them hard to navigate, even if they don't necessarily have any moral issue with it. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, one of the the one one that I have been I have been keeping up on that I I kind of want to get 
bring to the attention of more people is one called uh, Watashi Watabe uh, Watashi Watabe Tai uh, Hito Denashi, um, which uh, and the the unofficial English title is A Monster Wants to Eat Me. <laughs> and yes, this is a Yuri manga. Um, uh, so basic. Uh, so basically, it's about it's about a depressed girl who is depressed because her because and just generally like apathetic and uh, not and like uh, detached from the world in general because she went through like a traumatic uh, accident where her where her fam where her family died and she's. Uh, and she's kind of in a. Uh, oh yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess maybe. I guess pro probably a, a content warning for talking about uh, depression and, mm -hmm. and suicidal thoughts and things. Um, but um, but yeah, and she's kind of in a. I want to. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I I want to be dead, but I don't want to die. <laughs> kind Isn't of. I don't. That kind of mood. mood. Yeah, I don't. That's a... well, I I I don't I want to That's a mood, I want to die but I don't want to I don't I don't feel I don't have the have the the courage to to actually go through with the act mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just like I it would be easier if somebody did it for me uh, so mm -hmm. this girl um, yeah uh, Hinako is her name uh, she conveniently. Um, a mer uh, mermaid yokai shows up uh, in the form of a beautiful woman being like hey I I'm <laughs> I'm here to I'm here to <laughs> I'm here to watch I'm here to watch you uh, I'm here to uh, you, you smell good and I'm here to eat you but first I have to watch you ripen <laughs> into something that is worth eating because apparently, um, apparently depressed people who want to die don't taste very good. <laughs> I see. Uh, 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 and then I see, that's I see. where the then that's where the that's where the the drama comes from. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> and they and they and the the manga is about the the relationship that they're that they're they're building in the meantime and presumably something something else will happen i am mm -hmm. i am not <laughs> i am not certain that it will actually it will actually that it will actually end with anybody getting eaten um okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it is very in but it is a very it is it is a it is a really interesting story uh both because the i think <laughs> i think the premise is good and i think that the I think that the I think the character the character designs particularly particularly of the of the monster of the the monster mermaid girl are very attractive and she has a she has this in, very engaging like uh, Genki uh, Genki personality that belies her that sort of lends a like a darkly comedic uh, uh, aspect to her like cheerfully cheerfully saying well you see you. You're so, there's going to be, there's going to be a right time to rip apart your flesh and all of that <laughs> gotcha, stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> and it's and we're going to have a have a good time and things in the in the meantime. You'd better eat that delicious looking bento. And it's, <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> um, and also, and the and it and it actually con and it sort of and it contrasts really well with like the the protagonist's um, Hinako's like deadpan attitude about the about the whole situation, <laughs> and it's like it, it's like just being impatiently being like, please just stop wasting, please stop wasting my time and kill me already, and it's interesting. <laughs> And it's an interesting, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's, it's a good it's, dynamic for a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm enjoying it. Um, it's got, it's the kind of dark humor that I can certainly appreciate, I think. <laughs> yeah, but also, although, although, like, it doesn't, it definitely, it definitely doesn't, like, it doesn't take away from, like, the whole, the whole drama of the, 
of of the way that the the story kind of expresses uh, Hinako's uh, depressive uh, depressive mental state, which is something that I think is really I think is really interesting. Just uh, in <laughs> in general, like uh, mental mental like, obviously mental health isn't like a topic that is new to anime to anime and manga. Uh, right. But I am. But but I I I am interested in a specific uh, I am interested to see a story that kind of explores that specific feeling of you know of I want to 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 be dead but I don't want to deal with the the logistics of dying yeah. and yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and the kind of and the kind of um. And although there there are like there are like all kinds of there there are all like all kinds of places that it could that it could go at this point, so it, it could it could go badly, or it, or it could get or it could get cancelled, and we might That's never right. find out. Another thing that I recently read was um, what was uh, this? An what was the short introduction to title for this manga? A. Yes, we are we are talking about that. I'm just trying to think of the. Yeah, uh, Yasa, Yasa Khan is the short, abbreviated title. But yeah, an easy introduction mm -hmm. to love triangles in parentheses to pass the exam, exclamation point. Um, apparently, so this is a manga about um, about a love triangle that turns into uh, a poly that turns into a polycule, which. Um, which I appreciate because wait, they really did the the poly the poly resolution to the love triangle that I've been begging every fucking show of the love triangle to do. <laughs> oh God, yes, 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 yes. yes. Amazing. Uh, yes, it is. Um, what if we all? It, it is that. Fuss um, each other. Unfortunate. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 apparent it's it's really good it's really wholesome and it is like like the only and it is and i appreciate and i and i appreciate that like like the way the way it starts is just like it's just a really it's just got like there's a really nice and entertaining setup with you know potential with like characters that are interesting enough that you feel like that you that are that they can be expanded upon in cool ways one hopes and uh like uh so the way the way it starts off is there's this uh there's this young this young girl uh mayuki who's like uh just entering high school and she wants to she wants to go into a high school that's hard to get into because um a friend who she has a crush on is going into that school and she wants to <laughs> she wants to follow them so that her her chances are are with them are with her with the as group, with them, this girl are higher as you do right <laughs> so right. she gets a, mm -hmm. mm, so she gets a so she gets a tutor to teach her to for the exam for the entrance exam because she is actually not very good at, at studying and then before and then it turns out that this tutor is uh is a girl who she thought she saw doing doing a kiss and she's just like been and she's just like been thinking i wish i were i could go kissing someone kissing people like adults do and then she's all like hey sensei you're the, 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 she's this this girl's like a like a, a second year, I think, uh, mm -hmm. to be clear, um, and this, and she's like just about to get into her first year of high school, so it's not a, there's not a problematic age gap element here. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, but she's all like, "Hey, I want you to, I want you to teach me how to kiss like an adult," and then, <laughs> and then she does, and then, and then, uh, Reen, the girl, Reen, the tutor girl, Reen is all like, "Oh, all right," and then. And then they and then they do a kiss, and she's all like, "Oh, that's how it is. Thank you very much." And then, <laughs> thanks. Except Reen has actually Reen has actually like never kissed anyone before. It's like there's this really funny there's this just like really funny juxtaposition in 
the the bongo where she's all like where like Mayuki is all like I just got kissed by a mature person and Reed is like oh my god I, that was my first my kiss god. what am I doing <laughs> it was very <laughs> amazing I was going to die of embarrassment <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh yes. Um it um the thing that like and then uh the it turns out that the it turns out that the, the girl that Mayuki likes, um, Akira actually likes uh the tutor girl Rin and then Rin Rin at the same time is falling in love with Mayuki. So then it just it it, it just um yeah. 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 <laughs> and so when when they're all then then they're and then um, and I feel and it would have it that would have been, and and Reen is also like you know kind of uh, not kind of unsure about like, real pursuing relationships because she got burn burns in like her with uh, some other girls she likes because she wanted to like both of them, but both of them only wanted to like, to like her. And so they, (laughs) and so, so now she, and she's kind of like uh, in that, you know, position of like, wait, do I, I have to choose someone to like, I, I don't know if this is what I, if this is what I want. And then they're, and you know, Like the and it it ends that and the unfortunately it doesn't get to go a whole lot more places because it apparently because it 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 got because it got because it got axed and then the and the 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 author had to wrap it up really quickly. Um, I don't know the details of why it got axed, but they're probably. Boring reasons. Boring reasons, like and, not uh, enough people being enlightened. It's probably and capitalism's it's, uh, fault. And it's... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and it is it, it is un it is it is unfortunate because I because what what we do have is is really good and I would and I I would and I would like uh and I would like something that is a good a good manga on the level of Bloom and to you that is about polyamory because that doesn't that doesn't exist and and this this could have been that and it got cancelled and that is a like at least it has an end at least it concluded yeah, a lot but... a lot of shows don't even get that that grace I don't yeah. know why such shows like a lot of stories don't, don't really get that yeah but, that but respect, it, is, uh, it is unfortunately a very a very like hurried clearly hurried conclusion and it's gotcha. <laughs> it's a crime tell it's me who did this <gasps> it really <Yeah>. is <laughs> yes we'll bring them in front of the icc i have been told that i have been told that the author did write another another manga that i is did actually get to have a fuller run called a kiss in a white lily for my dearest girl i believe it's called um that has that has some polyamorous supporting characters but it's not it, it's not a bad like in a subplot but it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't focus on on polyamory like this one did <laughs> i'm going to have to i am going to have to read that manga now because they are they are they are a very they are a very they are a very good a very good artist and i hope that they I hope that they they're, they're, they are clear and they are clearly interested in polyamory as a as a theme. So I hope that they they get to explore that in in future works. I want I want more of their work to exist. The main thing, yeah, that is actually and so like what I was what I was saying earlier. Like the main the main thing that is kind of like that was kind of a interesting interest on like thing that I like I guess a thing that I could say is a flaw in not really a flaw more like a limitation a limit of the the story scope is that bloom into you doesn't really like um doesn't really uh talk about polyamorous uh, relationships at all even though like the even though it feels like it would be natural to in a story 
about queer and romantic exploration. So I feel I feel that's a little bit of a I feel that's a little bit of a of a blind spot for for that story, but also at the same time I do feel that, you know, it's 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 what it is and what it is about is really good. And I can't and I guess I can't I guess it's and I guess it's not really I mean, is it not is it is it not is it fair for me to complain that a, a story about something isn't about something else? I don't know. Some people will say it isn't and some people will say it is. <laughs> well, I I, it, I do think at least just like in terms of uh, <laughs> knowing what to include and what not to include in your story is like like yeah, a, that, a writing skill a in skill, and of itself. A skill. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if it had it, it would. I I definitely do prefer you know them not including something than including mm-hmm. it and doing it badly. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I am. Oh my lord, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just. I, I'm just like I just like really like I just kind of really relate to to that feeling of like of like feeling like that that that's that it's weird and and wrong that it's that it's just it's just like an ar- the 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 arbitrary social moray of you know of monag of monogamy being mm-hmm. the standard and that that's and that that's something that Rin, that Rin that the the character deals with in in Yasukan. and yeah. that is uh, and and yeah and I'm and I'm just I'm just really glad that there there is a story mm-hmm. that speaks to that feeling <laughs> even mm-hmm. if it's even if it's short and yeah cut off <laughs> right. um, and I am, and I. Uh, there are there are a few other uh, poly poly stories that I was recommended to to read uh, when I tweeted asking people for them, and mm. unfortunately, most of what what is there is kind of the the few th- the few manga that are about polyamory are kind of in the in the same boat as this one. Good good story got awkward got cut off awkwardly ended, and. Uh, and the other and all the rest of it is just kind of side side supporting supporting characters and even right, and right. even and and even the supporting characters in other in other yuri manga are not as as numerous so i would i would hope that more of those start existing and getting more of a chance to to tell a, to tell the stories about that yeah sure um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, another, another Yuri, another the last, um, or I guess the, the other interesting uh, Yuri manga that I've been reading is uh, is a manga called um, Asumi Chan is interested in lesbian brothels, which is, is what it she sounds in fact like. Interested in um, lesbian okay. brothels, or is it more of a passing curiosity? <laughs> mm, mm, it's it's more more than passing. Uh, so basically, the plot. Um, this is actually really a really interesting interesting case because um, uh, the artist um, the artist is actually one who I was following for a little while before I realized that they were drawing this manga. Um, they they draw a lot of a lot of love live uh, a lot of really good love live fan art. Uh, mm-hmm. Love live is is also gay, but we're probably not going to have time to talk about that. Um, and they did, and they actually they actually did do a really nice uh, poly Dojin series about uh, about uh, poly about a love live uh, poly ship. Um, mm, but the. And uh, and you and if you if you know their work, you probably know them because a love life art of theirs of uh, the characters Ayumu and you from the most recent uh, love life season uh, Nijiksaki is actually is going around as being used as a meme, <laughs> and uh, and that was that was actually that was actually something that I I tweeted about. Um, I'll I'll put the I'll I'll put the the image in the in the in the chat later for the benefits of putting of showing it on the yeah, yeah, yeah. on the podcast to yeah sure <laughs> um but yeah the i do remember to tweet though so you can keep it on 
but yeah, and the and the other and the other interesting um and yeah, so so I was so I was actually really surprised to like find it and be like, oh yeah, this is that artist. That that's that's really good. Um, the manga in question is about uh is about an older um a college student, uh, Sumi Chan, the titular protagonist who kind of who already has her has her gay egg more or less cracked because mm -hmm. a friend kissed her back when uh, back when she was when she was younger and then she but then that friend that friend moved away and she never saw them again and she wants to and she wants to find that friend again to mainly to be like Hey, I'm sorry that I told you that your kiss was lame. <laughs> <laughs> so she, so she like, so she, so she's talking with another another friend of hers at a bar, um, and is all, and is all, and is just telling this story, and then she's like, wait, I think I know a person by that name, and she, and Ooh. then, and then Asumi is like. Oh wait, where are where are they? And she and she says, "Oh, I think they're, I think they're, I think they're, they're working at a lesbian brothel." <laughs> and so the plot then the plot then goes that Asumi um, is pay, uh, pays for uh, pays to go to pays to go to the the les pays to go to the lesbian brothel and have sex with all of the women there until she finds the one who. Until she finds the one she's looking for, <laughs> as you do, and it's it's uh... as you do. Listen, it's, so it's actually I'm going to say the <laughs> no, premise. Yes. Okay, this is going to sound really weird, but the premise feels super relatable. Not the brothel part. <laughs> <laughs> the part of like no the part of like meeting someone and then never seeing them again and being yes. like yes 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 i i would exactly. i there are a lot of things that i would do mm. if i could like find this person again and just like do there it are. right this time you know and uh, yeah and, and and like i i i think it's rather interesting like even if it's like in like an erotic context like sometimes i can even like um mm. I think elevate the whole, uh, the what should we call like like the feelings that are underneath. Feelings. Yes. Yuck. <laughs> I have been informed. I have been informed by uh, one of my my roommates that gay people are not eggs. <laughs> you know who is an egg though? I. Yeah. Who, yeah, uh, yeah. One. Yeah. The Wonder Eggs. That that's that's just the, pretty the show. gay, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. That is that is gay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we should. <laughs> oh my lord! I I I like how because we we ran into this when we were recording um, the episode that's gonna come out before this one too, which is just like we could just continue to talk about Wonder Egg priority. We could we already. <laughs> I you could. could do a podcast that's just every episode of Wonder Egg Priority. Um, <laughs> I want. I wonder if somebody's doing that. That would. Uh, I don't know. Maybe be interesting, okay. depending on whoever they are. <laughs> I mean, someone did a. They did like a like a two hour analysis video for every episode of Darling and the Franks well, while it was why? Um, but which I have why? been sent. <laughs> So if, if if somebody paid this much attention to Frank's, a bad show, surely, <laughs> surely someone's is, paying attention to Wonder Egg Priority. A it's good not show. really about bad show or good show, though, is it? Yeah, I know. Let's see. Yeah. Mm, okay. But yeah, the going back to going back to the Asumi, Chan mm -hmm. manga. The thing that is like interesting me the the most about it is like kind of the the exploration of the the ex like uh that it it is it is a it is a sex work positive story which is good there nice. are not too many of many of those um and it is also and it is also actually a really and it and it's like later and like in the i think the third chapter uh asumi actually like gets a gets a job working at a 
at a gay bar in Shinjuku to because she realizes that the that the prostitutes are running out of are like running her wallet clean and she needs money for that. Right. <laughs> so she gets a so she gets a job to pay for it. Okay. Um okay. And that's actually, and that's actually, and that's actually like so. So that that element of the, of the of the story, like obviously, I can't speak to how like um, how accurate a representation it is of the of the of the of the LG of the LGBT community in in Shin in in Japan in Shinjuku or Japan in general. Mm -hmm. But I I like that there I like that there is a story about like um adults uh doing doing queer things in in a queer in a queer community yeah mm. yeah okay it's in it's really good it's um uh, yeah so uh and it's it's just it's it's a uh, there are and yeah i don't i don't and also and also i haven't i haven't i just i just haven't really i just haven't really seen a whole lot of uh a whole lot of stories about queer adults in general, at least on the, at least in anime and manga, and that is uh, like Bloom and You has a has a side couple that is uh, that is a uh, adult lesbians, and that's really good. Right. Um, uh, but it's obviously it's ob it's just kind of a like it it is really good to have in the story as like kind of uh, adults being like a got some sort of like a guide for young for younger uh the younger queer people and that's in the story um sorry now i'm just talking about blooming to you again it's good um <laughs> yeah no I, i've i've lost the we're plot. all good oh dear i think i think <laughs> we've gotten through a lot of what we wanted to talk about uh which is good awesome yeah Excellent. yeah for those of you who have just tuned in at the last moment, for some unknown reason, I'm Raghava, my pronouns are anything other than he or she. Uh, got I'm Mo. a black he him. Yeah. And, uh, and our guest. If you want to close out, uh, plug your stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm Joyce. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm I she her she her pronouns. I didn't mention that at the start. I don't think. Um, and you can find uh, find my uh, my YouTube uh, stuff at um, the channel Joyce Stick with a with a hyphen in between the Joyce and the Stick. That's important. And I am and I also have a Twitter um, at Joyce E Stick with you know two E's in there. And um, and I also. And I also have a have a Tumblr, which I I believe is Joyce Stick with a single E. I had to use the two E's on Twitter because somebody had already taken the handle, the other handle of the single E. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, and I have a I have a I have a new I have a new thing that should be coming out uh, shortly. It is unfortunately not about Yuri manga, but hopefully I will I will get to covering all of those in in due time and maybe it'll be it'll be some of the ones we got to talk about today How about great yeah um, and uh thank you thank you for having me How about thank you for coming well that was a great conversation but we still got more to come up next we've got rebel panda talking about my anime list and fascism it's a fun time just Note the following content warnings. We've got slurs, uh, misogyny, pedophilia, rape, harassment, just... Yeah, we talked about Redo Healer and Shield Hero and all the all of the bad anime that make us tear our hair out. <laughs> but it was still a blast. And if you're unable to listen to this, um, at least be sure to follow um, Rebel Panda with the links we provide in the description of wherever you're listening to this. Rebel, Rebel Panda, uh, oh. chairman of the Panda Revolution. I know who I am. Okay, okay, I'm Rebel Panda. If you don't know me, I write reviews on my anime list. I'm.
currently a college student. I'm a third year. I'm studying communications. Yeah, I hear you've been writing on Mal for quite some time, and you've written several good reviews, many of which I have in fact read. Uh, really? You want to talk? You read my review? Oh my gosh! I'm blushing. I'm blushing right now. Um. Yeah, I mean, I trust your opinion. Of course, I read your reviews. Okay, yeah, figures. Okay, makes sense. I don't know. I just always get, like, so excited at the thought. Um, <laughs> okay, I've been, um, I've been watching anime since I was 13. I, I've been writing reviews since I was 15, but I deleted all of them until I was 17 years old, because they were all pretty bad before then. And I write reviews every season, at least four of them, and I think I'm pretty good at it. So, you've been writing reviews for quite a long time, and you're probably, since uh, winter 2020 is, 21 is coming to a close, you're probably working on a cup, like a handful of reviews for this season. Um, why do you, why do you keep up with writing all these um, seasonal reviews? Like, what, what do you feel like you get out of it? What do you think it brings to, like, the, the anime community um, as, as a, like a larger like at large you know stuff like that um well mo i appreciate the question so the reason why i still write reviews is because i just really like expressing my opinions mm -hmm. to anyone um it's not easy or it wasn't easy for me growing up to be able to express how i felt about not just anime but movies tv shows books Especially in essays in English class, it kind of sucked at English class, but writing reviews made me more comfortable with talking about my opinions and how I felt, and it helped me communicate mm -hmm. with people better. So over time, I kind of just got better at talking to people because I wrote in my reviews. I wrote and people would come to my profile, they would send me messages on my anime list saying that they liked my review or they wanted to talk about it because they didn't like it. That gave me a lot of motivation to keep writing and a lot of confidence to kind of deal with the world and deal with people on the internet because it hasn't always been easy writing on my anime list as anyone who knows can attest to. It's kind of a mixed experience. Right. Yeah. Do you want to talk more about that? Why isn't it easy to write on my anime list? Well, some people think it's as easy as just typing on your keyboard, but after you say something even a little bit controversial, then you could, at the very least, get dogpiled by angry fans and mm -hmm. people who just don't want you to voice your opinion at all. We should start by, like, one. We're here to talk to you about that cool newfangled thing that's been around since the early 2000s my anime list and um uh for those of you listeners who are blissfully unaware of what it is uh panda would you like to explain yeah if you're lucky enough to not have a mal account it's a anime database much like the internet movie database where you can record all of the anime that you've watched Make a list of your own, have your own profile, upload a picture, do all you want. And there's a lot of features on the website, like forums where you can discuss whatever you want to talk about. You can write reviews on there and share them with the public, and they're all ranked equally against each other. And that's what I do. I just have used it as an outlet for a long time because... My reviews got popular on there when I was in high school, 16, and my first one was of Junie Tyson. It's the first popular one. If you remember that show, it was a battle royale show. It was really bad, but I said it was good because I was 16 and I liked it. It's kind of the backstory. All right. Um... Do you want me to talk a little bit about the moderation and how the site works? Okay. Yeah. Good. Well. Um, so, I hadn't really dealt with the users on there until just a couple of years ago, and it's kind of an infamous website for having 
really angry users and toxic people. And my experience has been mostly positive. I've met a lot of nice people, but I've also met a lot of angry people. The problem with Mal is if you are in a position like mine, which many people are, mm -hmm. you will get a lot of hate and you'll have to deal with that by deleting comments, blocking people, um, even locking your comments. In some cases, people do that, but I, I don't do that because I like to get as many people talking as possible. Mm -hmm. And there's a limitation on that. So you can only block up to 25 people. And since I've been writing for many years now, I've gone way over that. And in order to keep people at bay, I kind of just either talk to them, try to talk it out, which will take a long time, but in the end it's pretty much worth it, or I just wait until they stop and then add them to my block list, or report them and let the moderators get to it whenever they do, usually a week or two later. Could be worse. Yeah, uh, I know... Oh. Yeah, um, I know uh, I don't have um, a Mal account. Um, the only I I usually uh, when I deal with Mal, it's either because uh, so on Medium you can check where your your stories are shared, um, and I can see sometimes people linking my reviews on Mal and shitting on them, which is interesting. <laughs> I always I I'm I'm always flattered when someone's like, look at this dude, oh. He said Shield Hero was bad, yeah, because it was. Um, but uh, I do get like my fair share of like um, people really passionately um, wanting to uh, make me stop talking because I said a political thing, right? And how I usually deal with it, since nowadays most of it is on Twitter, is I troll and I block. Um, so I'm really interested to hear more about like how like all these limitations on how you can like block people and control what kind of, and like basically not even like control who you get to interact with on the site like um how they how they play into like the safety of mal users for example or just like the overall pleasant experience of being on a site um if you're in a position like like ours where you're like an openly leftist anime fan and you get a lot of hate from people who who do not seem to think that we should exist basically um i can't imagine that without the twitter block tool <laughs> yeah i i was just gonna say i actually end up using mal to find uh manga and anime a lot of the time because as much as i would like to be like hey mo hey panda what is like what are good obscure romances that exist like the people whose opinions i trust have not seen every single thing so i find myself actually like looking at the ratings fairly often actually so since you like obscure romances there's so many like just really good reviewers who just cover so many different things i have a whole list of them on mel i have my huge friends list because I just let anyone friend me because I want to be as nice and opening as possible. And you can just look through their recommendations and they have these really nicely written reviews. But the reason why they do that is probably for the same reason I do, so that they can express themselves and help other people find what they're looking for. Because we're all here since we like anime. It's not, it's not life or death. It's not something I have to do, but it's something... I really enjoy doing like having those conversations with people who say that you made my day because I enjoyed your review or I found something I like or even though I disagree I still learned something from your review and then there are other people who are super mad about it and you can report them to the mods and they'll get to it eventually um, sometimes they don't and sometimes the penalty isn't very substantial like someone can say really whatever they want they can call you any slur they can call you the f-word the t-word the um any other word the n-word and they will get a ban 
probably for a couple days, and if they do it again, they'll get another ban for probably a month. And lastly, they'll get a permanent ban. And they can just keep coming back no matter how many times they get banned, since you can make new accounts on there. It doesn't make it a safe place for people who are often the targets of harassment. Yeah, like, for me, I have been the target of harassment for basically ever, not ever, since I was in high school. Like, we talked about this in the last last time we recorded, but it's gone now. Um, when I was in high school, I used to get followed around by a group of guys who would just call me faggot in between classes. So that was like a five-minute block whenever I would go anywhere around the school, since my school was a circle. It was literally modeled after a prison, which is fun. Three floors, I would just walk around. Whenever they saw me, they would follow me around, say the word. And at the same time, I was just getting into Mal, getting into anime, reading reviews. And so whenever people would call me that, since that's their favorite word for me to call me a fag, it just bounced right off of me. I consider myself like to have a very high hate-taking capacity, but for a lot of people, that's not the case, because they didn't have to deal with that their whole life. Or maybe they did, but it's like associated with like a really negative experience that makes it difficult to continue to to continue to deal with, you know. Yeah. So uh I said this uh I've said this before, but I think a lot about um one of the big important things in creating safe and welcoming spaces is that if you don't, how can you reasonably expect people to feel comfortable like bringing their creativity to the table and being vulnerable at all? Yeah, yeah there's plenty of places people can go. Like, There's plenty of places. Like, you can make your own blog, you can go to Twitter, you can go to YouTube, but Mal is such like a a big space to meet people there's millions of users on there i think like five million no six million right now but these people who sustain harassment are not allowed on there since there's not really an easy way to deal with them they can say whatever they want they can gang up on you they can get you buried like in the review system especially if you try to speak out be political, be honest, mm -hmm. then you can get buried under sock accounts that are saying the complete opposite, which is what happened with Goblin Slayer, since I'm sure we all remember that shit, so shit show. Yeah. Um, for those that don't, it was... Um, how do I describe it? A fantasy show um, about ethnic cleansing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I like how that's like um, not even the only one I've talked about. <laughs> Terraformers. It, it was a fantasy yeah. show about ethnic cleansing that had like a sexual assault at the beginning of the at the beginning of the show. Um and a lot of people rightly said um they're just using sexual assault for shock value and that's like yeah. sexist and fucked up. And then people said, No man, you're just sensitive. Goblin Slayer is good. And then it turned out that Goblin Slayer was poorly written. <laughs> because that's how this always goes. Um, Literally every aspect about that show was bad. But if you said it was bad, you were labeled all kinds of things. Like, And Mal, like, enables that sort of, like, like the political hegemony that we try to challenge here on CWT. Absolutely. That's why I appreciate y'all so much since there are so few people who critically talk about anime but are also on the correct side of history. Oh. That's why I appreciate you too. Like, um I don't know if you remember, but um it was like after I read your The Day I Became God review, I think it was. Like the mm -hmm. one about the yeah. the little annoy the annoying purple girl. <laughs> Rock, you remember how annoying this girl was? <laughs> She was so annoying. Okay, I, yeah, I have no point. idea what you're talking about, and we can talk about okay. it later. I'm here. Okay. Her name was Hina, and she was so annoying. She was um, can't say anything really without spoilers. She was just annoying. She spoke like a nun, 
like yeah. someone pretending to be a oh nun. i i remember this one this was the one that we like dropped with the, like with the basketball. not even an episode in yeah we got like a half an episode in and we were like no thanks yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. i remember that one yeah okay so anyway but like one after, of the fastest drops it, it, record time <laughs> drop amazing <laughs> Um, but like the one only thing the... I dropped fast uh, as a side note, the only thing I dropped faster than that was um, seeing yesterday to me because oh, uh, I was just incredibly bored. Yeah, well, I saw that it was good on Twitter, and I was like, I don't know if I should pick it back up. And then I read your review on it. I was like, okay, cool, <laughs> <laughs> great. Oh my gosh, what a shameless show! It's so much worse than Welcome to the NHK, but it tries to be it so hard. Right. I was just saying, um, when I read your review for The Day I Became God, I think I told you, like, you made me believe in, like, mal reviews again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like, I, I almost wondered, cried. Oh. But, like, one of the reasons why I said that um, is because, like, if you look, like, like at the, the overwhelming, like, volume of, like, I, th- I, I kind of feel like common denominator anime reviews, they're all, like... First of all, aside from being like superficial, they do the thing I don't like, where they're like character three out of ten, art eight out of ten, um, music four out of ten, and then you average them, which is the absolute. Uh, I, I it's it's not like the worst way to review an anime, but it it's is pretty bad. It, it it is if you like keep this like super like narrow like build blocky sort of way of looking at like art that like removes it from like the context that it's in. But like also just like like also like bringing like the the political aspect and the critical aspect into mal reviews um, beyond simply seeing like stories as like sequences of events um, is something that I really appreciate uh, out of your reviews. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. For a while, people didn't think my reviews were political, or they didn't notice. Mm-hmm. But they've they've always been super political right from the start. I talked about um the like rampant misogyny in king's game which came out over three years ago Mm -hmm. king's game the anime yeah the one where like women get beaten stripped and burned alive and it's a self-insert the author literally wrote himself into this show oh oh it is it is the one i was thinking of when i was on one of my manga binges I stumbled onto this one. Oh boy, man! It's a self-insert. Yeah. You say? Is it like mm-hmm. Redo of Healer also like a self-insert story? Redo of Healer is in fact a self-insert. If you saw that article, which I'm pretty sure y- y'all did. Yeah, it's, yeah. You should. You retweeted it. And I was just like, oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Show. And oh people Lord. agree with him. They call that author base. Face. That's my MC. That's my author. Like, fuck off. See, see, see Ritu, I, I feel like it's really interesting of the people who try to, like, critique Redo, who are like, you should just critique Redo of Healer apolitically, but when, like, the reason you like it is because of its politics. <laughs> if the you're reason Redo people, of Healer like, is based, that's a political statement. <laughs> it, it's not even just that, right? The show's not well written. It's not well animated. It's not like, it doesn't have a good sound design, right? It's not, not even good sex porn. Sex. Yeah. Yeah. So the only reason you could possibly l- like it is because you agree with its justification of sexual assault. It, that's a political statement. I don't. <laughs> Fucking read his People only story. like um, they say all the time, "I like this because it's not political." But no, it's just because you agree with the politics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So I guess to tie it back, it is just it is good to have um not just you, but like um mal reviewers who think about things <laughs> instead of just writing what happened and then putting a number at the end. Um, yeah. Um, writing just the synopsis, people will write the reviews based on, like, episode four, or sometimes even earlier, mm-hmm. and they'll slap a number on it based on how they felt at the end, and it's, like, very transparent, and they're trying to do that for who knows why. Yeah. But then there's others who are trying to actually make a statement, say something, mm-hmm. be, like, super analytical and deep, and I am kind of like one of those. Not quite. I write a lot of reviews, so I don't have super super long time to go into complete detail and write 
like a dissertation. Mm-hmm. No, that's perfect. Uh, and um, so, so we have uh, this. Um, we have like lax. Not, I don't want to say lax, but more like um, a moderation team that kind of individualizes problems. That when mm-hmm. people start like throwing slurs around, when they start like having like hard right political opinions that like threaten other people, when they start harassing others, those specific users get like banned temporarily instead of oh, like making a slap on the wrist yeah instead of like making site-wide rules against what kind of language you are or not allowed to use mm-hmm. um we have like the general right-wing um snowflake mentality of um a lot of anime fans where they don't want to be challenged they don't want their biases confronted they don't want the sjws to ruin their favorite special little hobby right and we have like all of these like um, different like kind of negative factors that make Mal like a difficult place to operate on if you're like a marginalized person. So, um, have there been any like high profile examples of like, um, I guess how do I put it like fascism on the site? He asked. Oh, knowing the oh answer. yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's the biggest one which was covered a lot back in 2017, mm-hmm. where a Mal mod who writes articles, pretty good wrote one about Nazis that you want to punch the most and it got a lot of negative perception from people who want um, like equal representation in politics and don't be mean to the poor Nazis Um, Mm -hmm. so inevitably this is Mel after all they stepped in and told the author to change around the article to be more impartial and what he did was he added one Nazi I think it was one from JoJo's saying that, oh, this is a Nazi you actually might like. It's just so, so blatant, so transparent. The only person, the only side that it benefits from being chill to either side is the more unpopular one, the wrong one. Right. That's um, exactly right. I just, I don't know. I I do, I do get this a lot um, when I say that, like, that show should be more progressive people would be like well how would you like no author is like um mandated to make things that don't offend you by your logic whenever you do something you have to make sure that the nazis feel good too i'm like no mm-hmm. no i don't <laughs> no the nazis what? are just wrong <laughs> yeah they're just like this is like oh oh you think the sky is blue <laughs> That guy thinks the sky is brown. What do you think of that? <laughs> Nothing. You, <laughs> you're wrong. It's like it's like that guy thinks the sky is brown, so you need to respect his opinion. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> right. It's um, like flat earthers. Yeah. Hey, we gave a um, we gave a documentary to people who think the Earth is round, astronauts, and everyone else and then we gave a documentary to flat earthers because they're both equally valid except they're not exactly exactly there's an entire thing that we could go into on the midpoint fallacy and i feel like we should because i don't think we've covered it on cwt for some unknown reason but when you allow uh other people to set the other extreme right there mm-hmm. uh when you let them set the end point then at, it's human nature to be like oh well here are the two like ends of the spectrum so surely the middle must be acceptable so when you say when you put like nazis are good actually as one of the endpoints it not everyone will automatically go like nazis are good but the acceptable um the overton window will shift towards that area and we see that a lot with like the platforming of like extreme rightist candidates and how it like makes other like also rightist candidates seem like better in comparison yeah there's a uh, another aspect to the fallacy it's just it's the idea that like if you have two extreme and opposite positions um it's the assumption that the the truth is like in the middle when that's not like that's not uh true right like the best example in anime to compare to this mm -hmm. is darling the franks oh yeah (laughs) Um, both sides get equally get treated the same like on the same level especially when it comes to the reviews mm. like one is one is right the other is wrong is wrong 
and depending on your viewpoint you can decide and on Mal to balance out those reviews someone made like I think it's like a thousand five hundred sock accounts to upvote literally every positive review since oh, Frank H used to be like this was very satisfying to, to see uh -huh. after Darling the Franks ended like um, in 2018 mm -hmm. it was a three a one a one and a one in the top four reviews because if you use Mal you know only four reviews make it to the front page but a Darling the Franks fan or probably a dozen of them saw that and got really pissed off so they made as many accounts as they could and uploaded their reviews yeah and you get this idea it's like well if one side is darling into pranks as a masterpiece and the other side is darling into pranks as trash and surely darling into pranks had positive qualities but also some blood like no darling into pranks would suck bro <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you know on one side we have the people who think that women should have to bear babies in order to find purpose in life and the other side who thinks no um well, clearly. Clearly, women should have to bear some babies, but, you know, not all of them. <laughs> it's like Shinzo Abe wrote an anime. <laughs> there are people, really like, was. one of the reviews that got upvoted a 10 out of 10, mm -hmm. praised it for being a conservative show. Like, they I mean, said it's one of the best years for conservatism, because Donald Trump won, and all that stuff. He won that year, but he did a lot. And these are the kind of people who the show's attracting conservatives right I mean, yeah i mean like right i mean they are it, it, it was a conservative show but i, oh, I do yeah, find very it. Conservative. <laughs> they're not that's like entirely accurate good boy if you see the darling the franks twitter they they are all always in funimation's mentions asking for a second season like just go to any twitter post by funimation and scroll through it and you'll be very very oh surprised. If Darling and the Franks get the second season, but Oka no Yusha doesn't, I'm going to scream. <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, listen, like Shield Hero has no. three seasons. Rent a girlfriend has two. We're already we're already in the darkest timeline. All right. <laughs> Shield Hero. Oh my god, that's another one that causes so many people to get angry at me. Mm -hmm. and so I was on the right side of history, and I said it was terrible. It endorsed slavery, it was misogynistic, it was just disgusting in general. People got up in my mentions and started justifying pedophilia <laughs> in inadvertently. I like, look, my favorite thing is, slavery. like, she's not a child. She's actually a bird that transforms <laughs> into a child. I've unironically oh had people say this to my face. To my to your face? face? Yeah. What? Your, well, your IRL was, okay. face or your digital face? Oh, my digital face, of course. You know, like okay. like the Pikachu with the eyes. <laughs> right, right. I got it. Um, there's this one YouTube channel. Uh, I got to respond to them at some point. No, <laughs> but it will be like super no, old. Don't. <laughs> but it will be really fun. Okay. There, it's like Clownfish TV, and they're like one of those Hero Hey kind of adjacent sort of um, channels. Um, but yeah, they. Um, they were complaining about SJW's uh, canceling Shield Hero, um, and they called me out specifically. And my my first Shield Hero essay, and they were like, "The bloggers are being paid for by the activists at Crunchyroll to a uh, to a uh, push their agenda in anime and to make every new anime like Steven Universe." I think was the was the argument. The activists at Crunchyroll. Oh my god. The activists at Crunchyroll who paid for the rights to all three seasons of shield hero who sell merchandise like i just love the idea that one of my pa one of my five dollar patrons well actually no one of my one dollar patrons is like a crunchy roll activist being like yes <laughs> soon <laughs> another podcast episode to destroy the anime industry but no but the, but one of their defenses of shield hero was like um uh, like the little the little blonde kid who's like sexually interested in Naofumi it's not pedophilia because she's like a bird she's not really a child so what so, yeah that was the, <laughs> it was the argument <laughs> that they put I've forward. never heard that one. <laughs> oh my god um so is there any is there any good news coming out of Mal like are oh all the time are there mods who are trying to like fix some of this stuff are there mm. Maybe rule changes down the line. 
Okay, well, don't don't get too excited. You're kind of setting the bar really high. Now it's mm -hmm. it gets better all the time. There's more and more progressive people as the world gets better, or gets more aware of what's happening. Yeah, like you can look at the top reviews for Shield Hero for redo of Healer, and they actually address what's going on in it. That it's mm -hmm. really disgusting, and there are good <clears throat> mods out there. I don't want to like shit on every mod. There's certainly bad ones, but there's also good ones. I'm friends with two of them, who are really nice, and they'll let me know if there's shit going on behind the scenes. But okay. there's no one really making a push to change things for the better. I don't think there's anyone who's progressive who's a mod. Mm -hmm. I'd even go so far as to say there's like a couple really bad ones who will like target specific reviewers delete their reviews like there was one mod who deleted a guy's review that was perfectly fine he said that one show about the father who grooms his daughter to become like his wife uh, what was that called again um if even if I had to fight the demon lord, yeah. I would do it for my daughter. Something like that. He wrote a good review. He called it. Um, he said it's Usagi drop on steroids. I don't usually agree with what he writes, but he was really, really right on that one. And mod deleted it for like dubious reasons, and then just didn't communicate with the guy after. And lo and behold, I also communicate with this mod. He edits one of my reviews. And I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. why? Why did you do this? And he said, well, someone reported it. I'm like, okay, did you read the show? Did you watch the show? Did you read my review? And he said, I read the first paragraph, and mm. I didn't watch the show. I'm like, okay, well, can you change it back then? And he blocked me. Okay, <laughs> okay. That, well, <laughs> that's a mod. That's a mod who doesn't like people um, confronting him by saying that Lollicon or not lollycon that there is pedophilia in anime and you can't just call it lollycon it, the, there's a lot of substitutionism with with like with terms in anime spaces that kind of are definitely just covering for it's more like I, I think i've talked about this on one of the streams but just like when people say like Oh, you're like a man of culture for enjoying wholesome lolly head pads. Like that's just fuck. You're you're a pedophile. Okay, you're just. <laughs> it's it's like the, you're, oh man. You're a pedophile. I I I I noticed that you have the um, the pedo show in your uh, outline. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think I thought I remember seeing it. Anyway, but I remember when that came out, there was like that little chart of like the the good lollycon versus the bad pedophile, and I'm like, oh no, oh my god, oh no, like no. that was a meme. But now, like we've even like transcended that level of shit to the next level of shit that is like we've got the good rapist and we do a healer. <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah, talk talk about that because okay. that was that was on Mal, wasn't it? Unbelievable with redo of healer. What's happening right now? So people will go onto the forums. They will say all kinds of shit. Like one of the the forum threads was called "Is is um Kru a good rapist?" And they were debating if he was a good rapist or not, and if there's a better ones. And they were talking about different hentai, saying, like, what they would do in that situation, and if he should have done it. Not as, like, morally judging him, but, like, is he an effective rapist? It's just really sick. So, of course, I, um, I reported it to the mod. I was just like, hey, um, this is gonna make Mal look pretty bad, so maybe you should delete this. And he did, but it's like... Why wouldn't they monitor this forum for this one specific show? Because we all know that it's going to cause a lot of trouble, and they just don't. Like, yeah. you have to report any comment or any thread that just sounds especially disgusting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, I, that's, that's, that's an especially important thing to note, I think, when it comes to now and specific. Like, of course... How could you not know that we do a healer would cause a shit start? Have you not I mean, been the, listening? The, the, 
the thing about just like redo is that like we we talked about some of these shows a little there's always like a goblin slayer shield hero nuzaki chan and interspecies reviewer it's like there's always every season or two there's always the fucking controversial anime right that people um that that's basically uh, my personal theory is that they they exist uh for youtubers mainly uh because they can just they can just culture war and like milk that cow mm-hmm. get a bunch of views cultivate an audience that like knows like an in group and an out group and all that sort of stuff but like unfortunately it's a culture war that like legitimizes like right-wing ideas and like it's it, we are dealing with the constant fallout of gamer game um yeah but you've noticed that like mal is like a like a big part of that ecosystem oh, mal is a breeding ground for for like i don't want to say fascists so that's that's not quite it it's for post gamergate people like just people who don't like women who probably are sexually frustrated and they want some place to go and complain about the sjw's and the women who are trying to ruin anime you'll see polygon articles shared around a lot you'll see just people circle jerking these very mediocre shows like you said uzaki chan goblin slayer um I don't want to say interspecies reviewers because I actually like that show. It had good sex scenes. Yeah, that's why I like. I it. didn't. The story was like, n- n- not. There was. <laughs> I don't think it, it really mattered. It didn't have a story. It was just like. Yeah. Every it, it, you, setup you was went, an excuse for porn. <laughs> you went from brothel to brothel, and you did a thing. I I, I think people kind of missed the point of my interspecies reviewers take. Um, because, like, in my interspecies reviewers' take, I, I say, like, people expect me to do a feminist analysis of it. So I did a feminist analysis of it. But, like, it was, like, my, my, my point was less that, like, um, the show is, like, the, the most problematic thing ever. And more that people were using it in, like, this weird, like, proxy war against Funimation. Because, like, Funimation said, oh, this is porn, we probably shouldn't air it. And it was. They were totally <laughs> fucking justified in taking it off. Yeah, there. because it is. It was just porn. <laughs> right. It didn't have a story. <laughs> and then people were like, no, the Japanese, actually, the Japanese are perfectly okay. And then it got removed from daytime TV in Japan. Oh, my gosh. Because it was porn. <laughs> and people were like, oh, perhaps the Japanese are not as based as I can say. No. The director's base. He said he would push the limits of what's allowed on television, so he's pretty based. I, I, I think of the same thing of uh, what we were talking about with uh, the way people complained of like Crunchyroll is censoring Shield Hero. Of like, even if Crunchyroll is actively profiting off of Shield Hero and like propagating it, doing advertising for it, making it more socially acceptable in anime spaces, etc, etc, etc. Do you know never... how many times I have to deal with the Crunchyroll retweet of Raftalia? What? It's every fucking day on the TL. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, even if Crunchyroll is like doing all of that fucking garbage, uh, for it's the persecution complex of we must act like our culture, big quotes around the word culture there, is under attack and therefore we need to push them to be even more in favor of slavery anime or even like accommodating to me and me alone yeah it's the thing yeah like because i mean that's like the ultimate um the ultimate thing about like a lot of these like i guess we can call them like malreactionaries which is sort of a weird and niche term but i think it works it does work really generalize it to i think i i don't know for sure but i feel like we can generalize it to anime reactionaries in specific or in general okay because like but like the the thing about anime reactionaries that we like find on mal a lot uh is that the entire industry already caters to Mm -hmm. like every fucking show is about like a dude who's like like from 16 to 25 um who's like like sexually frustrated um who has been like persecuted by the world um, because he likes video games or manga or anime or some other sort of like like um 
a neat sort of hobby, right? Who gets like transported to a, like a magical world where like busty girls like fall all over themselves for it. Or if not that, if not transported, um, at least like given like incredible amounts of power and agency over all other people. Like there, every single show is like this. And like every single, and like all of the major anime publishers will like constantly push these shows in our faces. They'll like advertise for them. They'll tell you to watch them. They'll sell merch with them. Like, and like, this is like the the default. It's the status quo for for the anime industry. So like, their demographic is already prioritized over over every other show. Like, who like which, which who's tweeting about One Direct priority right now? Like like which 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 um which anime company is now? Now which anime company is tweeting about like ah, uh, what's the like which anime company is tweeting about like Jujutsu Kaisen? And I like Jujutsu Kaisen. Crunchy, like I said, Crunchyroll's still tweeting about Shield Hero. Like they're they're tweeting about fucking uh, hidden vagina, <laughs> hidden dungeon where only that I only I can enter. enter. Right. That's an yeah. innuendo. Oh, oh boy, I didn't even realize it until now. <laughs> wait, right? wait, 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 wait. So, so just real Which quick, one I just might. Um, blonde girl in red and white. Oh, absolutely oh, okay, enormous okay, okay. tits. That's it. Got it. <laughs> yeah, it's the same uh, but, show. Uh, yeah but like so like the industry already like caters around them but the thing is is that sometimes rarely the industry will also throw other people a bone right it'll also throw like non-perverts a bone right it'll also throw like women and like people of color and like lgbt people like a little like a little snack like to munch on while we watch the um, vast array of like male otaku-centric stories come out, and they cannot take this. It is not enough that they dominate everything. They must be the only thing in existence, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing else can exist but their fucking mediocre, B-grade bullshit. I, that's why I, 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 I really advocate calling these people snowflakes more. Because they were the snowflakes the whole time. It's like <laughs> oh, they are. They absolutely are. I see them in my comments all the time. If you don't like this mm-hmm. show, you're. They don't say snowflake because that's not a cool word word anymore. They say you're not an anime fan. You don't like these shows. Yeah. Why do you watch anime? It's like. I'm not a bad anime fan. How about that? <laughs> it's not that hard. I like <laughs> the good things. And don't like and I don't the like bad the bad things. things. <laughs> Ta da! It bothers me because they don't do arguments. They don't argue with you, right? If you say, um, "Let's take Shield Hero again," or "Let's take Redo Healer," I don't like Redo Healer um, because, in addition to all of its like narrative problems um, and the fact that it's about a dude with like magic fucking cum, right? <laughs> it's a <laughs> It's it's an anime that justifies um, uh, rape, misogyny, slavery, um, uh, homophobia, like all in one like fell swoop, right? And and the response to that is okay. I'm gonna harass you off the platform, right? The, the response to that is um, I'm gonna use I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that Mal has like bad moderation um, and make you feel unsafe, send you death threats, call you slurs, blah blah blah. This is like. It's cowardly behavior. And that's what bothers me. Because they, they tell you that they're the anime fans, that they're the that they're the that they're the real people who like own this community. But they don't. That's my spiel. That's my It's something I've wanted to say for a long time. And it won't be the last time you hear me say some version of this. They're little bitches. They are. I'd share with um one video from Dr. K. If y'all know Healthy Gamer, he's really good. He's a psychiatrist who talks to gamers and streamers about problems they deal with online. And the video is called "Psychiatrist Explains How Insecure How Insecure People Use the Internet." And I have it at the top of my page. I say, if you're seething with anger because you disagree with one of my reviews, please watch this before commenting. And people do, and they they kind of chill out. And sometimes they don't, and I just send it to them. I'm like. Watch this. You didn't watch the video. Let's talk a little bit about how 
people get harassed off the platform. I know we, we kind of mentioned it offhand, but I have a pretty personal example of a oh, yeah. Go for it. good reviewer Go for it. who it started writing a year ago right now. She wrote some great reviews that season of Darwin's Game, a couple other things like um, Asteroid in Love. If you know that show, it's a cute girls doing cute things, Doga Kobo show. And mm-hmm. she said it was bad because it is. And one guy read it and was really upset with her because he didn't like being told he was wrong. He took it very personally. So instead of talking to her in a cool and collected manner, he made dozens of accounts to go to her profile and harass her to send her really angry messages and bury her review under other ones. So this is what these people do. They make these accounts so that they can upvote the reviews they agree with and make sure that the ones they disagree with get buried at the bottom. So eventually she had to just delete her account or she closed it because you're not actually able to delete your own account on Mal. Mm-hmm. And it just really sucked because her reviews were so good. I remember immediately, as soon as I read her first one, I went to her profile and I was like, that was a really great review. I hope to see more. And she was like, yeah, I'm going to write more. And obviously she didn't. She I stopped mean, she couldn't. using mail. Mm-hmm. Just the thing. Mods didn't do anything about it, even though he yeah. was reported. Yeah. So... And really fucking sucks. And it's, yeah, and it's super di- distressing that that happens, especially, like, as we talked about earlier, like, those were good reviews, and now they, like, don't exist anymore mm-hmm. because of harassment. Yeah. yeah. They make the... They make the site worse. Oh, and it almost seems like self-sabotage, in a sense, like, you're literally making it less like have less people on your site you're making less diversity in opinions like who does that benefit yeah Mm -hmm. the fragile um bitch's ego (laughs) oh by the way these are all men like like male straight cis dudes yeah yeah, i know (laughs) yeah i know oh yeah (laughs) we we, we know we all know this absolutely don't tell them that though because they will get very mad very fragile. Oh, just because you think my opinion is invalid just because I'm a straight white man. Uh, I mean, no, but like, <laughs> that's not the, that's not what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, I mean, you say. can have a good opinion, straight white male, but um, you just don't, <laughs> so don't talk. <laughs> you have a bad opinion, and there are a lot of people who look exactly like you who have the same bad opinion. And unfortunately for human brains, they have like pattern recognition. <laughs> it, it, it really is about like how you act. Um, and like your conception of like the quality that matters um and like how you treat people uh like i've seen some people who are like you know multiple intersections of various marginalized people and they're still like absolute like abusers and dickheads right let's not (laughs) um the thing is rather just like if you're in a station in society, if, if you want to recognize that there are like different forms of, there are different forms of oppression, then you just have to like know that if you have like a perspective, then you should like keep that in mind. We're not, it's not even saying like your opinion is like invalid. It's just like, keep it in mind first and then say, and then we can talk about it, you know? And, and if there are other people who are directly affected by something, they'll keep that in mind and they'll say and you'll listen you know and if you disagree we can have a conversation if you agree it's cool that's that's the actual position um the mean position is that (laughs) i will always Uh, defend the mean position fuck everyone (laughs) the mean position is what you bring out when you know people are acting in bad faith in my opinion uh the mean position is the last resort of if you're not taking this seriously, then I don't have to either. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, I will always talk to people, no matter what side of the aisle they're on. Because, you know, I want to convince as many people as possible, even though it's it's typically a waste of waste of time. But, uh, you know, I, I try to yeah, do I it. Mean, and that's commendable. It is. It really is. Um, yeah. Sometimes oh, I yeah. kind of um, feel like I'm 
making myself seem further right by talking to these people and I because I try to respond to every message I get and end heated disagreements peacefully I worry I'll end up seeming amicable towards reactionaries but that's not how I want people to think of me I just hope the real me comes through in my reviews yeah okay well go to my anime list and add me on Mal I'll accept anyone's friend request I'll talk to anyone follow me on Twitter I might follow you back if you have good taste. If you don't, I probably won't. Um, <laughs> nothing personal. Like the panda test. Um, watch my videos on YouTube. I'm trying to make some right now. Just came out with my first one. I'll, I'll tweet about it. They're going to be about critically analyzing anime. The first one is about sound and music. And Yay! Just keep looking for my reviews. I'll be writing a bunch of them this season because I'm really bored with COVID. Mm-hmm. Do you, can we get a sneak peek of what you're planning on writing about? Oh, so today like I watched, let me see, I watched Promised Neverland. The second season mm-hmm. really sucks, so I'm going to be writing about that. I have some notes down, but I don't usually draft them until the end, so maybe it could get better. Probably not. Okay. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, make sure to check out Rebel Panda on all of the, they'll all be in the description as well as Choice's stuff. Um, I hope you liked this. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Take care.